All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Fox body update. So this is where we are at. We've had a lot of progress here. A lot of stuff go good. A lot of stuff go not so good. So where are we at? Well, we'll start with the front. So a bunch of stuff under the, under the hoof here. Um, so basically engine is pretty much ready to go back together completely. Um, obviously polished the header up, cleaned up the engine bay, painted everything. Wiring harnesses are tucked back here. Um, for the engine, painted the valve cover, painted the uh, timing belt cover, polished intake. So that's what we did to dress it up, cleaned up all the brackets. And then mechanically, what did we do? So we got 3236 Weber DGV carb, rebuilt it. Um, Oop, wrong finger. New oil cap, new valve cover gasket. Timing belt, did that. Timing belt and tensioner. New fuel pump with new fuel lines. Bled, bled the brakes, painted that to make it look like I did a race car mod. New rag joint, deleted the power steering. Just looped the lines for now. We'll see how it goes. I've heard mixed things on that with these cars. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so that's pretty much the engine bay. Nice and clean. Just going to keep it nice and clean. We're not trying to make any power. We want it to be like all of four horsepower to the tires. Okay. So I might actually have to uh, lower it more in the rear. So the tires rub more to cut down on that power. Cause like we said last time we were making about 5,000 horsepower. So we got to find a way to lose like 4,995. So I think definitely cutting the springs more in the rear so that leads us to the front end. So after doing the rag joint, definitely has bad inner tie rods. Um, actually came with a set of them, so that's going to go on at some point. Spacers. Somebody put the spacers on and then cut here, and it sticks out, so that runs on the wheel. And they're adapters. That's how I can run the wheels I've got. Um, so we got to fix that. Uh, probably going to not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. So I got the front springs out. They were also cut because this is apparently, you know, has to be a sickety dope dumped car um, with all seven horsepower. So going to get new springs front and rear for it because I don't really feel like dealing with that. Um, up underneath the car, like I said, it's super clean. This is an upstate New York Northeast car. As far as I know, it's been that his whole life. Uh, the previous owner at some point or two previous owners ago at some point had stripped the whole car down and basically... Uh, you know, coated it all. You can see in the interior, he had this whole interior out at one point. Um, he had fixed any of the major rust it had. Um, I know that because I just did the same thing underneath it, which he hadn't done. So the whole car got rust treatment. That didn't get done. Let me turn off this fan. Got my turbo going here to air the place out. Um, the rear cover didn't get done because I'm getting new rear cover, so it doesn't matter anyway. So what do I do for rust prevention slash repair on this type of a thing. So there really was no rust to repair on this underbody wise. So I use basically a three part slash four part system on everything that I do when it's got some, you know, just surface rust to clean it up. So the first thing I use is the good old D-Wilt with a um, whatever this is. Yep. All right. So yeah, DeWalt. Apparently I'm just in a different world right now. Um, clean up all the scale. Okay. Then you're going to spray it with some Armor All Auto Glass Cleaner or your Windex of choice. And then you're going to wipe it all down so it's nice and clean. Okay. Once we're all nice and clean, then we get the Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. And we spray everything. We spray the living crap out of literally everything. And uh, we try not to get overspray on things, but generally I get overspray on everything. Um, and then once that's done, I use a combination of some form of gloss paint and pour 15 or pour 49, whatever. It doesn't matter. Pour 15. Yeah. So basically what I'll do is I do all the seams and all the thick spots. You can kind of see the difference in the glossiness. So this is the pour 15. I do all the seams and all the, the spots that are a little bit more meh um, with that. And again, we're not talking about rot holes here. We're talking about scale. I do the rear end in pour 15 because that gets beat the heck. Um, 
I do the pinch welds with Pour 15. Obviously, that needs to be fixed. Um, and like I said, I do all the major seams with Pour 15, and it gives you that nice, glossy look. Um, and then all the big areas, you know, the spots where there's basically no rust or no anything, um, I spray it with just the gloss black, you know, paint of your choice, cheapo, whatever. Um, mainly that's just to protect the uh, rust converter from any type of, you know, cracks or chips. Um, the rust converter stuff works absolutely awesome. Haven't decided with this car yet whether I'm going to do it or not. I probably won't because it's just going to be a summer car. But if I have a, you know, like daily driver, like the Volkswagen and the Tundra that's kind of trying to peek in the garage and, you know, I like to keep my foreign cars outside. All the American stuff stays in here because it'll fall apart if you don't keep it out of the rain. Um, so, so yeah, so that, as far as that, then I will do a fluid film coating on it. Uh, or, well, actually I use wool wax, but same thing. Um, so that's generally what I do. All right, so moving forward with this. The interior, I've decided it's going to stay black because I don't feel like spending the money to get red seats and because apparently red seats is what everybody wants now. So I have pretty much a full black interior for it that came with the car. So it's going to stay black. Uh, the dash pad that came with it was all warped, so I'm going to try to fix that. If I can't fix it, I'm going to get a new one. Uh, so it's a dash pad cover. You can see the dash pad that's on it right now is not in good shape. Um, so, so yeah, gas tanks out just to make it easier to work on. And then gas tanks going to go back in. Oh, I have tubular lower control arms for it too, for the rear and upper control arms. Uh, they should be in the mail soon. So then the gas tank's going to go back in. The control arms going to go on. The springs are going to go on and then it's going to get painted. Uh, I don't know what color yet. I was thinking blue initially, but now I kind of might stay with the yellow. It looks kind of cool. And it'll be a lot easier to not have to worry about all the seams and everything. Engine bay is going to stay black just because I kind of like the, the pop of the blue motor in the black engine bay. Um, so, yeah, that's the update on the Mustang build. Um, guys, got any questions, let me know. I don't have a whole lot of answers, but I'll try as best I can. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe. We're getting decently up there now on subscribers and some, you know... Some comments on stuff. Let's try to get these Fox body videos to go a little bit bigger. I don't know why they're not. I would have thought this kind of a, you know, sickly dope car would be like way more popular. But so anyway, talk to you guys soon. Later.